Peace for Ukraine or you reign. Oh my God, I think that was the best time I have had up to now, compared to all the big buildings, big meditation halls, roomy uh, houses and big houses, or whatever, you know. I never feel as good. I have to tell you the truth. At that time, all we needed was just one or two meals a day, and it's not elaborate or anything. Sometimes we don't have utensils. We just use a slab stone, a slate stone, you know, the flat one. Yeah, they abound in the river, and some are not that flat, but you can chop it. You can break it and make it flat a little bit, and more or less flat doesn't matter, who cares, you know. <laughs> and put oil on it, and zip, 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 and then, okay, eat it. Or just uh, barbecue, or cook something. Use small utensils, and cook one or two parts. Everybody eats together. Afterward, we had dessert even. You know, because while you're cooking all the stuff, rice and vegetables and all that, you can put the um, sweet potatoes inside the hot coals and hot ashes. After you finish cooking, eat it, your meal and everything, you take it out and it's just ripe. <laughs> it's just right. I eat it like dessert. And at that time, I even make wine. Remember the vegan wine? I don't know if you know about it. I don't think you are another generation. And I make wine out of those juices and herbs and stuff, and it tastes so beautiful. And uh, that's how we live our life in the beginning of my mission. <laughs> and now, I don't know, I lost the visa for Taiwan. Not lost, but uh, at that time I could stay permanently. Every year I had to renew. But one time I went out, and then I couldn't go back in time. Yeah, and at that time, some of the people didn't like it, that some people follow me, their family, and they work in high office, so it was difficult for me to renew my visa again. Because some of their family members follow me as a nun and monk, although they're already very big and adults, they don't like it. So uh, here I am. <laughs> at that time, I couldn't get a visa to come back. I could go back, but just stay two weeks or something. I have to apply for a visa and then stay a month. Oh, I just couldn't bother anymore. That was many years after. And, oh, somehow. The beginning was fun because I was so young and naive. <laughs> First time monk. <laughs> Fear nothing, know nothing. <laughs> and then I'm still alive. God protects the innocence, huh? Yeah, I was quite naive. Can you imagine? Really, it's like the Buddha's time. And in the 20th century end, people build skyscrapers, go to the moon and all that, and we're hanging around in tents and <laughs> shaving heads and living in the jungle and <laughs> roasting potatoes. <laughs> do you believe it? And think it's the best life that we had, and I still do. Yeah. Of course, many people like that kind of lifestyle, and they follow me, you know. I don't know how I even fit the whole bunch of them. I didn't have any money. <laughs> how did I ever do that? I can't forget. I did something like we planted some vegetables and bean sprouts, which is easy. A lazy stuff, I put it in the bath, I clean the bathtub, <laughs> lay it underneath with some cloth, yeah, cheesecloth or something, whatever, a mosquito net we had, and then put beans on it, and then another layer, another layer, and the whole bathtub was full of beans. Then it just took one by one and saw them. <laughs> the whole bathtub was full of beans, and it became bean sprouts. Every day I water it from the tap, <laughs> easy, and then after a week or something, I can't remember, it, it grows one someday, and then I sell one by one. <laughs> the top layer is bigger, sell it first, and then it's so thick and big, and uh, I sell them. And then that's it. Some of them have a little money with them, so they feed themselves. Some don't have anything. <laughs> and we used to have a small tin, a small uh, metal can. Whatever money we had, we put all in there. Anybody who needed what, took our what, and used what. Well, it was very simple. We knew we didn't have much, so don't take much, you know. <laughs> I can't believe that. And we survived. Jesus. And even survived that river. Because summer is sometimes monsoon season. It can be rainy, you know. 
And we came there a long time, and nothing happened. My God, <laughs> the rain gods must have felt very sorry. <laughs> he hold his tears. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe he went somewhere else to cry quietly, so he had no more tears left <laughs> for Taiwan. <laughs> so embarrassed to cry in the public. <laughs> so he hired himself and cried somewhere. When he came back to Taiwan, no more water left. So during all that time, we had no problem. The water helped us, you know, and the wood in the forest, so free. Just freedom. I don't know anymore this kind of freedom. At that time... Even though I heard that some religious organizations don't like us because we knew and don't know what we're doing, you know, why? <laughs> Immediate enlightenment, what? How? They have been practicing all their lives until <laughs> they have been sitting there at the bottom almost for hours and don't know what enlightenment is. And me, such a small young girl from nowhere, and say, Immediate enlightenment now. <laughs> oh, they can't bear it, you know. And um, sometimes. They created some problems, you know, but I was invincible, I told you. I didn't know what problem means, you know. I couldn't believe anything like that. You know, whatever they told me is okay. I don't care. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was so convinced in my own goodness. You understand me? I could not believe that anybody doesn't understand that I'm good. <laughs> That's it. So self-confident. But the world has been showing me differently. <laughs> After 20 years, you know a little different. <laughs> yeah. My God, that was a good time. I was so naive, you know, I wouldn't know what's the difference. Yeah? Between a cobra and a duck, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, because I used to live in the mountains, and I've seen snakes everywhere. In India, there are snakes everywhere. And uh, centipede and scorpion, they sleep together with me, you know, in the bed. When you get up, sometimes you see them crawling around or under your, your pillow. I'm not kidding, it happened to me. And uh, it's not that I don't know that they're poisonous, because they bit my neighbors, and she was all swollen, had to go emergency quickly. And I know they are poisonous, but what can I do? That's all I have. <laughs> they are the only friends. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be more lonely if they're not there. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, I can't believe it now, when I look back, I was really invincible and almost stupid, you know. Who would do that? <laughs> I was so young and this is a woman alone walk around in the forest at night. No flashlight, can't afford it. <laughs> and I even see the road. It's not like outside the road here, you know, you can feel the way. Because sometimes I go to some temple or see uh, the teacher or master or some yogi, yoga, whatever. And I forgot the time and when I came back it's so late and I still got home. Believe it or not, there's no moonlight or nothing. How did I get home? <laughs> now I can't even remember how I did it, but I did. And it's really puzzling to me now, you know, but I did all that stupid stuff. Sleeping on, on the mud ground and all that. I had only one sleeping bag and Two pyjama like clothes, like the <laughs> Punjab clothes, you know, just a tunic, really thin cotton, cheap cotton, and the trousers. That's that. And survive all this. And how did I do that? I mean, I was just a woman. How did I even do that? I forgot. <laughs> I must have been well organized. <laughs> but I never felt more free than at that time, the time that we camped on the river bank. Yeah. But it was a better climate than here, you know? Taiwan, in the south. Well, sometimes it could be very cold, but I don't know. We were okay then. <laughs> huh? Less rain? I guess less rain, but we had tents, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and when four people, the heat is high, so if it, if even if you wet, you dry in no time. <laughs> <laughs> Magic, you know, yeah. And we go wander from one place to another sometimes. It was really a wandering life. Yeah, I couldn't stay in somewhere too long, you know, sometimes. For some different reasons, you know, some people asked us to go somewhere else, and we didn't want to bother them. Later on, I was more known, and people asked me to go in their houses sometimes. But I had a lot of people with me, 20, 40, 30, well, how to go in there? Didn't want to bother, and we already kept the principle that we don't bother people. So we just stay outside camp, and then <laughs> went to lecture at night, you know. <laughs>
uh, even the first couple of times I lecture, you know, it was in a big hall and a lot of people came in. And everybody already liked it. And so they said, oh, master, this, master, that. <laughs> and they thought, I have a temple like everybody else, you know, <laughs> in Taiwan, you know. If you go talking like that, you must have a temple. And many disciples following already. They didn't know I live in a tent on the river bank <laughs> and roasted my potatoes at midnight <laughs> on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <sighs> I didn't feel anything different. I didn't feel oh, I should have a temple or anything. I didn't feel anything. Just feel cool. Just normal. Just like you feel like you have a home or a job, that's it. <laughs> and some people follow us secretly and feel, oh, so strange. How come this master doesn't have any temple? And then sleeps here in the tent and roasts potatoes. <laughs> yeah, because that day we didn't have any food. We didn't have any fresh food or protein or nothing. We were not having donations, even at that time already. So whatever we had, we spent, eh? no more. Yeah. And then we buy potatoes, uh, oranges, and we roast everything, anything. Sugar can, oranges, apples, <laughs> potatoes, sweet and not sweet. It was really a free life. My God, could I ever live like that again? Would I like that again? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I've grown out of it, huh? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. At that time, solitude was all I wanted. Mostly whenever I, even after we had the land already, and we all, each one had their own tent. That was, wow, luxury life. <laughs> and elevated ground, you know. <laughs> Bamboo bind together and put the tent on top, you know. It's not like flat on the riverbank like before. And we're in a mountain. So it's not flat, so we have to make it like you make a platform, yeah? Because the mountain is not flat. And then we both have elevation. And now they're even better. Each one has a cave, you know. <laughs> you know the cave in Meoli or not? None of you know? Uh, you've seen them? Have you been in there once? Uh, I've just seen them from the outside. You couldn't get in? They didn't let you? Um, I think I stood in the doorway. And that was uh, you didn't want to, okay. It's not necessary, of course. Uh, yeah, each one makes a cave of their own liking with water, washing basin, <laughs> and, the, and the ventilator <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> I have one also. <laughs> It's kind of humid to live in a cave in Taiwan, a little bit. But now they have a dehumidification machine, the cave with aircon and <laughs> dehumidifier. <you know? laughs> it's just funny <laughs> sometimes. And heater and all that. Mm, even then, at that time, after we had that mountain, we didn't make caves yet. And I always longed to go into the wilderness alone. So sometimes I take a whole bunch of them. Sometimes I just go alone with one or two people. Yeah. And I told you before, I used to go in that cave. Yeah. Until the tree fell on top of it. I mean, in front of it and blocked the whole cave. You still can go in, but you have to crawl under branches, you know. <laughs> so I thought, okay, if you don't want me to go in there, then that's it. That's the end. And that's really, I don't ever go back there again. I don't ever go back to Taiwan again. <laughs> Ever since, something happened here and there, and then I just kind of cut off. Mm. But I remember that the freest time and the happiest time. My God, I was really happy. So carefree, you know. I didn't feel any burden or trouble. Not at all. We lived like three, four hundred, or at least two hundred something people, but it felt like one. Didn't feel any friction between us, no tension, nothing. Some are cooking and some hang around waiting. <laughs> some are sitting there mouth watering and <laughs> each one does their own job. <laughs> some do some knitting, some do cleaning tents or do whatever. Some just go and hang on the rock, sit there, and some go in the bush. <laughs> some hang in the hammock, you know, depends. Uh, it was just a really happy time. 
So even then, afterward, we had land, we had, you know, more stable tents, you know, more stable land, more stable caves, more stable house, even I never feel as happy.